House Resolution 260 provides a structured rule for consideration of the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2016. It is my privilege to present this rule to the House as a member of the Rules Committee. It is also my privilege to do so as a member of the Committee of Jurisdiction over this bill, the House Armed Services Committee. The Rules Committee received a record number of amendments to the bill heard nearly six hours of testimony from our colleagues, and in this rule have made in order 135 amendments for consideration on the House floor. As is traditional, the rule gives the chair of the Armed Services Committee authority to offer such amendments en banc to facilitate consideration of such a large number of amendments. This is a good rule that helps pave the way for the passage of the National Defense Authorization Act. This law, this bill, governs the defense of the United States of America, provides for the servicemen and women that defend this country. It is the single most important function of this House. And we're going to hear a spirited debate today. But we need to make sure as we hear this debate that we focus on what we're here about, and that is to defend the people of the United States. And while there are other things that may be brought up that are important and good, they are not about the defense of the United States and would not be in order for this bill. As a member of the House Armed Services Committee, I have followed this bill from the start. Counting the Rules Committee hours and the hours in committee, I have personally spent over 25 hours in debate on this bill. This has been an incredibly open process. 335 amendments were filed at the Armed Services Committee level. 211 amendments were adopted by the House Armed Services Committee in markup, including 96 Democrat amendments. 135 amendments were made in order by the rule. 69 of those are Democrat or bipartisan amendments. That's over 450 amendments that have been considered since we started this process. The National Defense Authorization Act has a history of bipartisanship, which is only appropriate on the single most important thing that we do, defending the people of the United States. It passed out of the Committee of Armed Services on a vote of 60 to 2. It's been completed every year since 1962 on a bipartisan basis. That's 53 straight years, and we need to make it 54. This bill is vitally important to our country. For the first time in a long time, Americans are ranking national security as their number one concern, even ahead of the economy. Former CIA leader Mike Morrell said he has never seen more threats to our country at any other time in his 33 years in the business. Most alarmingly, he says that we are at risk of another attack here in the United States. Our military men and women need this bill to do their job and help keep us safe. The administration has issued a statement of administrative policy, and it indicated in there that the president's advisors would recommend a veto of this bill. I sincerely hope the president would not do so, given the bipartisan effort to pass a bill so critical to the security of our nation. President Obama requested authorization for $612 billion in military spending. And this bill matches that request dollar for dollar. Now, some of my colleagues quibble with that. And they quibble with that because, as you can see in this light blue area at the very top in the President's recommendation, there's a certain amount of money that he wants to be in the categorization of Overseas Contingency Operations, OCO. The bill does the same thing, except it increases OCO by a small amount that you can see here and increase, increases the base by a larger amount. So in essence, what we've done here is gotten to the same place as the president by making a very small alteration to the OCO. Some of my colleagues are trying to use our military men as pawns in an effort to boost non-defense discretionary spending. That is plainly wrong and reprehensible. Those other issues are important to our country, and it's important that we debate them. But we should never hold up 
this piece of legislation that is historically bipartisan to make a point on something that has nothing to do with the defense of the United States of America. This bill is for the men and women who are keeping our nation safe. They have elected to serve our nation. The least we can do is give them the resources and the policy they need to do their job. And now some of my colleagues want to use them as political bargaining chips. That is hard for me to believe that anyone would consider doing that in this House.